Hi, everyone, and um, welcome to our discussion on mainstreaming ESG. I'm Jessica Matthews. I'm Global Head of Sustainable Investing at JP Morgan within the private bank, and I'm joined by Josh Levin. He's the Chief Strategy Officer and is a co-founder at Open Invest, which is a fintech with the mission to bring values-based investing to the mainstream via technology. So it'll be the Jess and Josh show today, and we really just want to talk to you about where you know, where ESG has come in this kind of evolution towards mainstreaming, what we see today, and certainly want to leave with some thoughts on where we see it going. Um, as some of you may know, JP Morgan acquired Open Invest this summer um, to join us in the private bank. Um, Josh and I have actually known each other for years, and so it's been really exciting for me um, because we went from being really excited about, you know, evaluating a product and a service to literally bringing that um, really, you know, top um, leading expertise right here into the private bank. So really excited about all that um, this will mean for us as a partnership. And so we'll get into a bit about that. Um, so Josh, I want to turn it over to you. First of all, I do recall that this is really exciting for you because Open Invest really originally got its roots wandering around Fort Mason at, um, at this event years ago. Um, so I know this is coming full circle for you. Uh, but I just wanted to have you kind of expand upon what I sort of alluded to already, which is how you know mainstreaming sustainable investing is really at the core of the innovations at Open Invest. Thanks, Jessica. And yes, it is just great to be back at SoCap. If any of you were there in the fall of 2016, you might remember us or remember me accosting you in the food truck lines or anywhere else at SoCap as we <laughs> launched our first products. Uh, and we're convinced it was going to go viral, starting with the um, the community right here, the impact investing community. And uh, I wouldn't say we went viral, but it's been a it's been a great ride, and and we're really excited where we've gotten to and where we're going. Uh, but yes, the company started Open Invest started about five years ago, and it was really a marriage of two backgrounds. I came from the sustainable finance space. Uh, my co-founder and a bunch of our team members came from traditional hedge funds, some of the world's largest hedge funds, where they had led technology teams automating a lot of the key systems, portfolio management, trading, risk controls, analytics. And we got together and founded Open Invest as a public benefit corporation. A lot of you probably know what that is. Our mission is to mainstream uh, ESG through technology. And I like to feel that we brought some a level of technology horsepower into the space that hadn't necessarily been there before. As we looked at ESG and impact investing, um, I think a core insight was that it's you know people people aren't just looking for a new label or asset class. That it's really broader than that. It's bigger than that. People are looking for a whole new way to invest. They want to invest with their their whole selves. They want to know what they own. They want transparency. They want experiences. They want engagement. And this is really turning the traditional industry ethos on its head. It's not leave it to the expert. It's uh, tell me what's going on, engage me, represent me holistically, keep keep me involved. And to do that at scale requires a whole new set of technologies and, and services. Things like seamless personalization, uh, real-time, tangible, impact reporting, proxy voting, and more. And so these are the types of things we built across our platform. And we feel that the next big wave in ESG growth, which is starting to hit us and we're very excited about, is not going to be driven by products, but rather by, by features, by services. And that ESG is ultimately going to mainstream as features rather than products. Um, so, yeah, that's where we've come to now. And here we are with, with JP Morgan, ready to help drive that wave. And I guess, Jessica, to, back to you, I, I'm just curious to hear your perspective on this. When you joined JP Morgan, uh, what did you see as the institutional and traditional approach to ESG and, and where do you see it going now? Yeah, sure. So I joined three and a half years ago, um, having been um, in the field already for 10 years. And it was actually to your point, that's kind of the appropriate word. I really got my start doing this 13 years ago, more on the endowments and foundation side of things. And really throughout that time, and especially once I got here to JP Morgan, there was a lot of focus, I feel like, more on that institutional side of the market and certainly, you know, large assets at play. Um, but what's been so great about the journey here is, 
first of all, like as soon as I walked in, getting more experience with, you know, a high net worth or ultra high net worth um, uh, asset base or client base, excuse me. Um, and But I would still say the journey, which is so interesting, and I'm going to come back to why I'm just going to pick up on what you said about your observations on a service and an entire experience. I would still say when I got here, though, what we were very focused on, and rightfully so, and we, we needed to do work on this, was thinking about expanding that product palette. So we had a good bit, you know, when I got here three, almost four years ago, but we needed really to expand the options um, across different types of investing from, you know, ESG focus to more themes. We certainly needed to expand across asset classes. We've been doing a lot of work in the private markets, for example, or creating some discretionary portfolio in the public markets. Um, so there was a lot of work to do around product. And I feel good about that. Honestly, I, I feel good that we've made a lot of progress. And if a client comes to us, we'd say, look, we have all of these investment options for you. But, and this comes back to what you were just saying, and I think really excites us here and why we felt like this was such a good partnership is what is the full client experience around this? And in particular, what I'd say that I feel like we needed to spend more time on, and I think people around the industry feel similarly, um, and you guys just have come up with a great tool is around reporting. Like, what does it mean to actually diagnose a portfolio? What is a client going to look at? then and see on a quarterly basis um, or anytime they really want to call up their advisor to say, what's in my portfolio? Um, and you know, how has it improved over time or not? And you know, what steps can I take to improve that? So I think this notion of moving away from just sustainable investing as a product to more of a service and an experience is exactly you know, the kind of journey that we're on. And look at all the stuff you know, we're already discussing together, Josh, from that you know, product. And yes, there will be some offering a product, but it's more of a customization than a single product. And then there's reporting, there's diagnostics, you know, hopefully proxy voting, all sorts of things that are going to round this out. So, um, so that, that's my view about what's, what's pretty exciting in this evolution that we've been on. Um, but maybe actually over, or back over to you. I mean, from your side of things and your perspective, and again, this is a topic about mainstreaming, what does Open Invest and your team view as the real um, impact that this partnership can have? Well, I, it's funny because I think for years, all of you guys, folks in the industry have been saying, no, now we're in the golden age of ESG, right? And it keeps updating and getting hotter and hotter. I, I still think we're just at the tip of the iceberg. Um, and COVID and a lot of the uh, social movements and, and events of the last two years have further accelerated this. But if I can land something here, I think that uh, technology and new rails and infrastructure at banks and the bunch of big providers are really going to open up the field for a, a new level of acceleration that people may not have gotten their minds around. It's kind of like we were building bit better and better websites, but when Apple comes out with the iPhone and you have a whole new paradigm shift that uh, allows the you know the app world to explode, and so I'm using that as a bit of a metaphor for that. I think we're going from from web you know 1.0 to 2.0 here in terms of ESG, and again it connects. I think we saw that and have built towards that. Um, and benefited from that because of our principles. Like everybody in this space is driven by their principles. For us, our, our principles, my principle was, I'm just not interested in being 5% of someone's portfolio. Like mm -hmm. that's not interesting to me. I don't wanna be the next brochure or the next thing in someone's cocktail party conversations. I mean, not that I have anything against that, but the world just can't wait. When when you came come from World Wildlife Fund like I did, and you're looking at these statistics every day. I mean, we're just facing a, a complete environmental catastrophe. It's going off a cliff. The chainsaws are buzzing. That's what I hear in the back of my head all day. So I believe in impact investing, not just as a career, but truly unlocking finance as a driver for rapid social and political change. And we need to achieve that now. And I want to achieve that in the next five to 10 years, certainly in my lifetime. Uh, so that's the kind of principle that's the driving force and then when we we were raising an investment round and jp morgan looked at it and then said that they wanted to acquire that was not an easy decision for us and one of the main things probably the biggest thing that tipped us was just the scale so 
our mission was to mainstream. JP Morgan Chase is as mainstream as it gets. It's the largest bank in the U.S. They service um, over half of American households. So that's that's what we're talking about here. And I think that taking our technology tools and applying them to that scale is not going to just accelerate ESG, but it's going to help ensure that there's engagement and impact uh, with the end clients, creating the feedback loops with the broader wealth channel uh, across the US that will really help to change consciousness at the street level in terms of what finance is and its kind of 3D impact on the world. Um, so I, I, these are these are broad concepts I'm talking about, but I'm saying, for example, having everyone who's using Chase products starting in investments, but ultimately getting down to you know, long-term credit cards, spending, banking and checking, seeing real-time impact reporting on their dashboards, right? And seeing nudges and realizing how they can make changes in the world and what does that add up to concretely. And then nudging them to take other actions in other parts of their lives that can contribute to that. And again, at the type of scale that we have here, I mean, I don't feel like I'm going to, I'm likely to get another chance in my life to have that type of impact. So that's, that's what excites us about this partnership. That's what's driven us. And just as a note to the industry here, you can't do anything at this scale without technology. You can't do anything at this scale without technology. And everyone is going to be looking for solutions to compete in this space. Uh, VCs have gone from ESG skeptical five years ago to calling us constantly saying, what are you looking at? How do we get an ESG technology play? Uh, other banks, other players are reacting and will be reacting to what we're doing here. Everybody's looking for things to buy. And the bottleneck now is really on the supply side. So I think it's an exciting time and there's a lot more supply that is needed in terms of scalable ESG uh, solutions uh, and technologies. Got it. And, you know, one of the things we talked a little bit abstractly, maybe about some of these things, but maybe just bring it to life. And perhaps they seem obvious to some, but I think you guys um, have this notion where we're talking about curating causes. What are some of the ones that you feel like really resonate with clients? Because, um, you know, this is certainly not about, we keep using the term ESG, but this isn't about ESG scores. This is about getting very specific around certain issue areas that clients care about. So, could you help bring that to life just a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, we're like, I, I think of, uh, of social responsible investing in ESG as in many ways built up for the institutional client, even though there's obviously been a lot of diehard retail segments and, and mutual funds and other products. And we started at $100, like tiny accounts and wanting to let everybody, basically us and our friends, be able to do the type of custom personalized values aligned investing that, that ultra high net worth could do. And when you bring it to the mass market, everything ends up changing. It, it's not just the products, it's how do you even talk about um, screening? How do you talk about impact? How do you talk about proxies? So if we take screening, so I'm using the traditional terms, like nobody understands or wants to hear that this is negative screens or has negative screens and positive tilts. That doesn't actually, um, that's not understandable jargon to most people. So we ended up talking about it in terms of causes. And these are really thematic approaches that include positive and negative, but can be endlessly mix and match and overlaid on your portfolio. And then finally, quickly learning from our customer base, what are the new areas? They're responding to uh, social movements. They're responding to the news cycle. So we develop things like a cause around refugees, which companies are committed to doing the most to help uh, refugees and um, the clients actually get impact metrics on their dashboards. How many, approximately how many refugees have been hired as a result of their portfolio, how many have been mentored and so on. We also had a lot of folks caring about mass incarceration and traditionally asset managers might just divest the two private prison companies. We got together with NGOs and created, a, I think the first kind of master data set on mass incarceration. So which companies are um, providing goods and services, selling goods and services to prisons, lobbying for more of these get tough on crime bills. And conversely, who's 
committed to hiring the formerly incarcerated and so on. So those are just some examples. But I think more broadly, it's really responding to the kind of mainstream understanding uh, or nascent understanding of what impact would look like through their money. Yep. Yeah. No, I mean, having flipped under the hood and seen some of these things um, in more detail, it really it really is impressive what you guys have done for. By the way, I went this whole time without noticing you were in your J.P. Morgan police today, which I just love. <laughs> they, they kept our, we kept our logo ball. We kept the open vest logo ball. Yeah, the but yes, it's very comfortable, I have to say. You guys yeah. make a good fleece. Um, all right. Well, lest we we have the SoCap audience talk more about our fashion choices today, maybe we should maybe we should bring it to a conclusion. Um, and by the way, we have to note that you know we were talking earlier about how much we can't wait to be back at Fort Mason. Not the least of which is because um, nobody listening to this will know that um, I put everybody through 30 minutes of technological snafus before we even got on this call. So we can't wait to get back to Fort Mason and do this again live, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully next year. Um, all right, so Josh, let's let's end on sort of some of the moonshots. So you guys have done so much to get here um, and you know really have an innovative product out in the marketplace, but just thinking about what's next, what's on the horizon, where, where do you see this going? Working on a bunch of stuff with you guys, as you know, and I can't I can't share all of it. And then important to us is also maintaining the pace of innovation. Like I said, we're just at the beginning. So it's about rapidly building additional things as well. I would say the thing I'm personally most excited about is proxy voting. So if any of you who are open invest users know that we released a feature about two years ago where you could vote your shareholder resolutions with a swipe on your smartphone. And it would be curate curated you just get a nudge when there's one that um would be relevant and interesting and then you can swipe your vote and you're actually voting in the, in these board level decisions so it makes a ton of sense it was a three-year labor of love for me to develop this product it's something that should exist in the world we all own these companies these companies are getting more powerful there's a democracy in waiting and 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 i thought when we launched this thing that it was immediately going to go viral it's like the world's first digital democracy. Boom. Here you go. Get it in the app store. Turns out it did not go viral. Uh, the world was not waiting for easy proxy voting because the world has no idea what proxy voting is. Just us here in this virtual Fort Mason Center know what proxy voting is and a few others. But a lot has changed in the last few years. There's been growing media attention, everything from... Uh, Congratulations, like you guys actually winning these votes. Remember when the goal was just to get 10, 15% and now we're winning some of them. And engine number one created a ton of, uh, and as you saw, and others were, were, were very involved with that action. They got a lot of media attention. So I think there's growing consciousness around that. And then it's part of a, a larger growing circle around impact investing that creates a, a new opportunity there's VC money flowing into the proxy voting space. And most importantly, I think with JP Morgan scale, when you have when you have tens of millions of clients, there's really an opportunity for us to now take these, these types of tools and educational content and tip the market. And so I am so excited to see what the true full potential is of unlocking street level proxy voting for shareholders globally. But you know, back to you and Jessica. You've you're working on a bunch of things, open invest and beyond across the bank. Uh, what would you like to see in the space now? Well, we certainly have our work cut out for us for everything we're going to be doing together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think some of the other interesting things that are happening. You know, you see um, a lot of commitments around um, what banks are going to do. This one included just the other day. Um, to net zero portfolios. I think there's a lot that investors can be doing in their portfolios. Um, and it becomes not just, you know, choosing a portfolio that's got a lower carbon footprint, but what real changes are we making? Are there offsets involved? Are we, you know, allocating to more solutions, et cetera? It, it, we think of any number of levers that we could pull so that across asset classes, you know, we really are on a journey um, to lower carbon portfolios. And then the other one that I would give, you kind of already alluded to this, Josh, it was, um, you know, we talked about investing this whole time. It's actually investing in, you know, my title. So that's what we focus on. We focus on the investments here at JP Morgan. But, you know, I think we're in a journey now where, again, it's, it's all about sustainability on the brain of investors, but clients as people. 
And so what else do we provide here? We do banking, lending, deposits, we do uh, mortgages. So I think I think really we're going to turn a corner to where we're offering advice. I'd like to think that when clients walk in the door, we're going to have a goals-based discussion with them that isn't just about investments. It's really about everything that they do with us. So um, so I think you know that's that's what I hope for. I think we have a lot of every time I think I turned a corner and we are um, you know we've accomplished something, which we've accomplished a lot. There's just there's the next horizon, and I think some of those are in scope. So um, anyway, well 20, 20 minutes goes quickly. As a matter of fact, I'm just realizing we're at twenty one. So I guess I guess we'll conclude conclude this mainstreaming discussion. And leave it there. Um, any last words, Josh? No, I think that covers it. Thanks, All Jessica. Right. Thanks, All everybody. Right. We'll leave it there. Um, thank you again to the group at SOCAP for having us. And um, we look forward to hopefully doing this again in person next year.